Hi and welcome to today's episode, which is going to be all about making another tasty treat to take to an acting job. This time it's on stage. Today is Sunday the 5th of June and on Tuesday I'm going to be heading up to the northeast to start rehearsals on a play for the rest of the month. I'm appearing in a play called Magnolia Walls that's been created by Worky Ticket Theatre Company. I'll stick all the links to everything in the description for you. It's a great company. I've done an audio play for them last year. The play has been created in conjunction with a critical research study. Uh, it's been looking at conflict and relationships within the armed forces. It's going to be quite a dark and heavy piece of work. So I thought, yeah, let's take something sweet and delicious and a little bit comforting to kind of, you know, just a moment of brightness as we pause for breaks. Decided to make some caramels. My friend sent me this little book, the Little Vegan Cookbook. And there's like 500 different vegan recipes. And yeah, they've got a recipe for chocolate salty caramels. So I thought I'd knock up a batch of those and then thought, well, I've got to put a Rachel kind of touch on it. So I'm going to put different toppings on there that aren't in the recipe. There's just put a little bit of salt on top. To start with, I need two cups of coconut milk, which the recipe is telling me is 470 grams. Well, it says 470 mils, but it's the same kind of thing. My cup measures are off, I think. So I don't know whether to trust them. We'll just do it in grams. I've got the coconut milk on a medium heat. Mine goes up to nine, it's on six. I need to let that come up to a boil. I'm gonna break down a bar of chocolate. I'm leaving it in the packet. And then like Bob Ross taught us, I'm gonna beat the devil out of it. And you can do that kind of thing as well. And then shake it around. Once the coconut milk comes up to the boil, I'm gonna add in the chocolate. Just let that melt down. While the chocolate melts, I'll introduce you to golden syrup. So this is partially inverted refiner's syrup. The original recipe wants corn syrup. It's not really a thing in the UK, or if it is, I've not seen it. <laughs> so I've Googled it and you can sub. And I think this is gonna make it taste even better because that's got a slight caramel flavor to it anyway. Switching to a whisk, just cause I find it a bit more efficient. <laughs> So just keep giving it a good stir. So I've got one cup of the syrup, that's about 235 grams, and two cups of golden caster sugar, that's 400 grams. So add the sugar in, give that a very light stir just to get it to start dissolving rather than being sitting there in big clumps. And then the golden syrup. And then whisk that together. Hopefully that'll show up. It says boil it for 35 minutes. I've got a feeling that means three to five. <laughs> I've been thinking that sounds like a really long amount of time for sugar to come to the boil. Um, so that's kind of messed me up a little bit. <laughs> Sticking my temperature probe in. Yeah, see, it, it needs to come to 240. So there's no way that's gonna take 35 minutes. I've just gone in with a spatula, because I wanna feel if there's any grains of sugar. I struggle to feel that with a whisk. With a spatula I get more sort of tactile feedback. Got a little glass of water there, I'm going to stick it in the freezer. I'll use that to test the caramel to see if it's firm enough. So I've got some vegan margarine, that's a half a cup, 112 grams. Throw this in the pot. Well not throw it because that's dangerous. <laughs> Put it in gently. Whisk the margarine in. Scraping down the sides of the pan. You can just see I'm getting some build up on there. I just want to move that around. Once the mixture starts boiling, stop stirring it. And then I'm going to set my timer for three minutes and then I'll test it with a probe. The first topping is going to be 50 grams of toasted walnuts. I might not need all of them, but we'll see. And then 10 grams of roasted coffee beans. The second is 40 grams of pecans and a tablespoon of maple sugar. So that's got kind of a maple syrup sort of flavor to it. And then the third will be toasted some desiccated coconut, that's about a tablespoon. Then there's about a teaspoon of dried lime that I've grated up. And about a tablespoon of chopped goji berries. And then the third will be smoked sea salt. Yeah, so I don't know if I'll use the entire quantity of nuts and toppings and stuff, but I saw it's better to have too much than too few. And the nuts, I toasted them at like 170 in the air fryer for four minutes thereabouts. For the coconut and the coffee, because they're so small, I covered them with foil and then punched holes in the top because otherwise they're just gonna spin up into the element and burn really badly. That's a little hack for you. So I'm checking the temperature. Do it for another two minutes. Same for the pecans. They're very brittle once they're toasted, so you know it won't take much, much work, but if you wanna get a knife in, feel free. Because I've never done this before, I don't know what the texture is going to be like straight out of the pan. So I might have to let it cool down a little bit before putting the toppings on, because otherwise they're just going to sink. 
Check it again. If you're using a probe, just make sure to keep the tip off the bottom of the pan. It'll give you an inaccurate read. Interesting. Maybe it is 35 minutes then, because that's only climbed one degree since I last stuck it in, which was two minutes ago. For the coffee, I'm going to just give them a bit of a light crushing. You don't want to go bananas on there, but although it depends on what kind of, what size you like them. So you want little bits like that, kind of nibbed, nibbed coffee. The reason I'm doing four is because I want choice, <laughs> but also just to give you some ideas as well. With the coconut and lime one, if I'd have had any, I would have put like dried pineapple or maybe dried mango, guava, that kind of thing. But I only had the goji berries. Once it hits 240 Fahrenheit, I'll then mix in a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Just gives an extra bit of boost of flavor. For reference, 240 Fahrenheit is 116 Celsius centigrade, whichever one you like using. <laughs> if you've got the spare cash, I'd recommend getting a temperature probe like this. They're very useful. I think I bought it for making tofu because you have to add the coagulant in at a certain temperature. So I thought, well, I'll get one. And then, yeah, they're useful just when you're reheating things from frozen because you can stick it in, make sure it's come up to temperature. If you don't have a temperature probe or even a candy thermometer, the booklet tells me to dip the end of a wooden spoon in. So I've just got my old, <laughs> needs a bit of nourishment that does. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, you dunk the end of a spoon in and if it clings to it, it's ready or nearly ready. So, but we'll do that as well so you can see what it should look like. The recipe says to use a nine by nine cake pan. I've only got sevens, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to use two of them. Um, and then just, I guess, to do a very fine, thin layer. Now that everything's calmed down and under control, <laughs> I can show off my new arm braid. If you've seen the vegan chicken liver pate video that I did, I introduced you to the full body braid system. So it's straps like this, but then goes around your whole body. This one is just the arm braid. So it comes up across the shoulders there. This one is adjustable. So there's little tabs so you can move it around. The full braid system is a one size because it comes with extension straps. Whereas this, because of its nature, they've had to do it in sizes but there's a little sizing chart and everything on the website, which I'll stick the link to in the description here. The arm braid is doing for my arms what the full braid does for the rest of my body. So yeah, it's providing a nice feeling of being cradled and supported. It's not a brace, it's fully elastic. There's plenty of give, so it's not a support brace. Um, so if there's any, you know, chiros or osteos or PTs, that, oh, don't use braces. Yeah, well, if you've got bendy joints like I do, I need all the help I can get, okay? The braids are fantastic for people who have Ehlers-Danlos like I do, but they're also great if you're an athlete or if you just want a bit of extra support, if you've got any kind of joint pain or chronic pain type things that you have to live with. They're just wonderful. <laughs> Feel really, really good. Just like the braid system, the arm braid also has different ways of wearing it. So you can move, if I can remember how, to, how I did it. So you can move the straps, so you can have it before your elbow or after your elbow. It just gives a different sensation. For me, this is more supportive, like in the elbow joint. If you have it after your elbow, I don't know if that's the right terminology, but that's what I'm using. Um, you can slip it down and then have it like that. So that then provides a bit of extra support on the wrist. Now this is my cast iron skillet. You'll have seen me using it for making cakes and stuff. It's not something I cook with because of the weight of it. It really hurts my wrists. But yeah, that feels more stable actually. So to keep it like that, I've got to really use a lot of forearm muscles here. Whereas that's my natural position. It kind of, that's where my wrist locks. Whereas here, I'm not feeling nearly as much hyperextension in the wrist. So that's much more comfortable. If I'm right, this has been on for half an hour now, but you can sort of see how much volume has lost, it's evaporated. I think this has had about 40 minutes now. I'm just trying to get, <laughs> it's tricky trying to film this because I don't want to, nice, okay. So I'm gonna turn the heat off. So I'm gonna dunk a spoon in. So it's clinging to the spoon nicely. Got my glass of water set up. And apparently if I can hold it in my hand and flatten it a little bit, I've got caramel. So I'm gonna whisk in that tablespoon of vanilla extract. It does look like it's split. There's so much fat on the top there. Yeah, look, see, all of that is fat. I think what I should do is put the toppings on the bottom because the fat's gonna rise. I'll do half of each, half a tray of each. 
This is very frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was no warning about that in the book and I don't, I followed the recipe. So that's the coffee and walnut maple pecan done. Sprinkle in some salt on one side. So the problem with this is the paper's lifting at the sides. So sprinkle in the dried lime and then finally the goji berries. I'm just trying to pour. No, okay. So I'm just going to pour it in, hope for the best. So I've got the two pans filled. Yeah. So if you look there, that's all fat. It was fine when I put it in the glass, so I, I'm hoping it's gonna be okay. Candy making is very alien to me, so I can't even explain what's happened here. So the fat's yellow, which is leading me to think that's the margarine, and it does state non-dairy margarine, so it's not like I've substituted and caused the problem for once. <laughs> that was way too much of the toppings. <laughs> so you don't need nearly that much, maybe like a tablespoon of each, something like that. Um, yeah, but the rest of it, I can just put in my granola, apart from the coffee, I'll make a drink with that. I'm gonna set them on a cooling rack for 10 minutes, just so they can get cold air at the bottom. And then I'll stick them in the fridge for a couple of hours, or at least an hour. Just in case you're not aware, if you put hot food into a fridge, it's gonna raise the internal temperature, which especially if you've got animal products in there, it can be really bad. <laughs> like you, that's how you end up with food poisoning. So just be mindful of that. Uh, and also some, especially if you're doing hot to freezer, like I've put a Pyrex dish hot into the freezer before and it exploded. So just be mindful of rapid temperature changes. So I'll see you back once that's set and we'll do some munching. The caramels have been setting for a couple of hours now. So let's have a look. So I've had them in the fridge. So everything was all set from the looks of it. And I think my suspicions were correct that that was margarine, the grease that was on the top, because it's kind of where it's cloudy. That looks like melted margarine to me. That's when I've melted margarine before and then reset it in the fridge. So yeah, everything's floated. <laughs> so that's a problem. So with very clean hands, I'm just gonna poke the top and see. Okay, so it is firm. Let's see if I can scrape it off. So this works. <laughs> it's just gonna be super annoying having to scrape all of this out. I've been trying to kind of puzzle out why this has happened. And I don't know if I'm honest, but keep checking the pinned comment. And as I learn more, I'll update that. The marge that I'm scraping off actually tastes really good. <laughs> it's kind of caramel and sweet. So I'm gonna stick that on toast later. Why waste it? So that's the amount of scraped off. It's not horrendous, I suppose. So that's maybe a teaspoon. Let's put a teaspoon less, I don't know, <laughs> whatever. Um, but yeah, let's flip them over and see how we're looking. Pulled out another square of grease proof because I can feel the paper is stuck to the bottom with fat. So yeah, you can see how much is in the tin as well. So I'm finding it sticking, but if I pull it back. It does lift with a little bit of encouragement. I'm just scoring lines on it just so I can sort of figure out how many to cut from it. And then a bit wonky, but that's okay. Everything's a bit wonky today. And then I'll do maybe into four. Okay. So flipping it was definitely a wise decision because if all the toppings were on there, the fat would have just coagulated around that. It would have just set hard on all the toppings and then that would have been really unpleasant and I would have had to scrape them all off. So at least, although a lot of it has risen to the top, at least some of it is on the bottom. <laughs> I'll tell you which one this is. I think it's walnut and coffee. Um, yeah, it's really difficult to tell. Uh, <laughs> but so you can see how soft it is, which I suppose caramel is quite soft. Perhaps I was being, you know, overly, I don't know what the word is, but perhaps I was expecting too much <laughs> because the picture is a very definitive block, like sharp edged. And it's, I think there's two pieces sitting on top of each other. If I didn't have so much to do, 
I'd cover everything in chocolate because that would just sort it out. But I just don't have that kind of time or patience or energy, <laughs> quite frankly, because I still need to pack for a month. Um, yeah, but let's eat it. <laughs> I mean, it's super stretchy. Mm, the flavor is quite nice. I wouldn't call it caramel. Yeah, that's the coffee and walnut. It tastes maybe like a diet caramel would. That it's got that. It's missing something, and I think that something is butter. So I've snagged a piece of. The, <laughs> it's just flopping around. I've snagged a piece of the uh, pecan and maple. I think because that looks kind of red, like a pecan skin. Mm. The pecans do a lot of work in there. Mm. Yeah, I think covered in a chocolate shell, like I did for the sweet potato fudge. That would be really good because that would give it some stability. I think this would make a fantastic base for a dessert. So the other day I needed to eat my feelings. <laughs> so I bought some of these goo free from. So this is a chocolate mousse with salted caramel on the bottom. So I think that mixture would work really well in that context. So if it's in a container, because then you'd have to deal with handling it. And it would also provide a, a nice bit of texture in there as well. Yeah, so maybe Hmm, maybe this is gonna be one of those recipes that then triggers other things for me, which is fun. I do enjoy that. I'm not selling it terribly well. It does taste probably much better than I'm making out. I'm just disappointed with it because <laughs> I want it to take a really beautiful, you know, delicious treat for people at rehearsals. And it, it is very tasty. It, it is. <laughs> like I'm just, I'm being down on myself and the imposter syndrome's kicking in. Anyway, that's the coconut, lime and goji berry one try that I mean they're all going to taste kind of similar except the nuts because they've got oils in them as oh maybe no no I was wondering if the oils in the nuts had caused that but no because I didn't I could see the fat on it before I put those in that's really interesting mm. the lime the dried lime how to describe the flavor it's a little <laughs> it's a little bit aftershave like not in a bad way but it's got that it's not like a lime candy. It's more aromatic than it is, you know, like Skittles or Jolly Ranchers, that kind of mm, lime. It tastes a bit artificial. That just tastes really natural and yummy. I am super glad that I did put the toppings on because otherwise that's just going to be really boring for me because I quite like textures, like especially since going vegan, textures become more and more important. I think the salted ones are just going to be a bit, I mean, they'll taste good, but to eat, I think they're just going to be a bit boring. There's only one way to find out. Yeah, these definitely need to be stored in the fridge <laughs> because, oh God, what's this gonna do on the train? Yeah, so they're getting very stretchy. <laughs> is it gonna go or is it just gonna stretch forever? Well, <laughs> I mean, it's fun to eat if nothing else. <laughs> The salt's bringing out more flavours. Mmm. Mmm. I think half a teaspoon, maybe quarter of a teaspoon of salt in the whole thing would really lift it up a little bit. Because now I can taste a bit of complexity, whereas in the others it's kind of just sweetness. There's no detectable buttery flavour. Mmm, interesting but it's lacking in texture. So it's a bit of a boring thing to eat. It's just sugar, sugar, fat. Yeah, I'm now gonna have to think about how I'm gonna transport this because I'm going on the train. I'll put them in some plastic pots with grease proof if I have to stack them. But I've got a feeling that, because I, these are already going soft after being out of the fridge for like 15 minutes. So by the time I get up north, um, I've got a feeling it's going to be a big solid mass. I might take a knife with me. <laughs> I can just chop bits off. Just had an idea for it. I think that would be great in ice cream. Mm. So if you're making it from scratch, once you finish churning it, I find that in the one I've got, the ice cream is still pretty soft by the time it's finished. So I think at that point, take the churn, take it out of the churn or take the beater out mix the pieces in and you're probably going to want to do it one at a time like if you cut 
sections down and then fold it very gently because otherwise the pieces are just going to smush and then stick it in the freezer. If you've got shop-bought ice cream, leave it on the side, let it soften and then mix them in that way and then bung it back in. Mm, I think that would be really good. Really good in there. Mm. Maybe even like frozen yogurt. If you do just a sort of vanilla frozen yogurt and then swirl it with that. Ooh. That could also make a nice cookie sandwich like the uh, like the apple and rhubarb butter ones that I did or the pumpkin pie cookies and the jammy custards might make a nice filling for cookies. If I wasn't taking it away with me I'd do loads of little experiments on it and update the pin comment but I can't because other people are going to eat it but yeah maybe I don't know hot buttered toast stick some of that in and then bang it under the grill again until everything melts. <laughs> that would be filthy but amazing. As I learn more about sugar and caramel and toffee and all that kind of stuff, I'll keep updating the pinned comment. Yeah, because something's, I don't know, maybe this, it, maybe it's just the recipe wasn't spot on to start with. And the problem with these little compilation cookbooks is that you don't know who's written it because it, it's like several different authors, so I can't contact them. Whereas when you find recipes online, you can often comment on the recipe and ask some questions. Hit subscribe and tap the bell icon if you want more vegan recipes that I assure you will work this time. <laughs>